I used to I used to work in in folk clubs for quite a while. In fact, I started a folk club many years ago um, uh, in in a town called Solihull. <laughs> yes, I thought you'd be impressed. <laughs> You've, obviously, you've been uh, you've been primed by the warm-up man, Paul. Very good, isn't he? Isn't he funny? <laughs> Pig. <laughs> we, actually, he's an old mate of mine. We used to work in the post office together, and they gave us the sack from writing. Oh yes, they do on envelopes labelled photographs. Do not bend. <laughs> so, <laughs> what I thought I would do, just I'll just do a very uh, uh, being sort of. Having this wondrous knowledge of TV studios, uh, a couple of points to bear in mind. Um, when the cameras are on, you don't ogle. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, your mum's going to love it, isn't she? <laughs> There's Anne Mary! <laughs> Ten million other people are going, who's that silly son? <laughs> And if, if you see one of the floor assistants walking around with a big card with clap written on it... <laughs> You're way ahead, aren't you? Ahead. <laughs> if I was a carpenter, I'd screw you to the bed. <laughs> We flew into Ibiza, and the courier was there, like, to greet us. And uh, he informed us that the hotel wasn't quite ready, you know, and would I mind sleeping in the concrete mixer? <laughs> I once did Top of the Pops, you know. <laughs> you know, I don't know, Jasper Carrot on Top of the Pops. It's a bit like Vera Lynn doing the old grey whistle test. <laughs> When you're on a bus, when, when the nutter gets on the bus, does the nutter sit next to you? The nutter always sits next to me. Why is that? Why do I always get the nutter? I'm the same as everyone else. Like, oh. like it happened the other day, like I was on the top deck of the bus, and minding my own business. Bus stops, you know, a couple of people get on, start off. And, then you could hear the nutter coming up the stairs. <laughs> eh? Has anyone seen my camel? <laughs> Please, God, don't let the nutter sit next to me. I bought a watchtower. <laughs> Everybody starts stretching out on the seats, don't they? Like... <laughs> if I'm on the bus, no problem, they'll spot me. Woo! I must have this aura above my head, nutter lover, you know? <laughs> Is anyone seat her? No, oh good! <laughs> you can hear the visible sighs of relief from everyone else on the bus. And... <gasps> oh, thank God he's got the nutter. <laughs> I thought I was in for that one, you know? Yeah. It's a camel job, they're the word. <laughs> Nutters love showing you things, don't they? Hey, I've got an atom bomb here, you know. <laughs> it's a corned beef tin, you know. Because <laughs> once you've got the nutter, everybody else can enjoy it then, can't they? Have you paid your fare? Yes, here are my tickets. Oh, good. Rip, 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 rip. <laughs> I love weddings. <laughs> <laughs> and they never let you get off either, do they? Uh, excuse me? No. <laughs> been three days on a bus with a nut or something. <laughs> Wild about acne. <laughs> acne grows wild about me. I'm just
just call that in gurgling zits As far as the eye can see They call me Mellow Yellow I was reading uh, one of these motor racing magazines, right? And it was uh, this photo, this big full-page photo of uh, this Formula One racing car that was sponsored by Durex. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there was a photo of it in this magazine, this beautiful, sleek Formula One racing car with Durex written all over it, and it's in the pits with a burst tyre. <laughs> I was watching Match of the Day today, right? Now, normally, I, I've never seen Match of the Day very much because it's, it's always been on a Saturday night and I've always been working, right? And now, on a Sunday, I've been watching it, right? And I am fascinated with Jimmy Hill's chin. <laughs> well, <laughs> what an incredible chin, isn't it? You could, you could get pickles out of a jar with it. <laughs> Durex is on sale in Australia, but it is in fact the brand name of the best-selling sticky tape. <laughs> yeah, we have sellotape, they have Durex. <laughs> Very confusing when you don't know. <laughs> You're way ahead on that one. <laughs> It caught me out a couple of times, I've got to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to go to Earl's Court for a couple of days. Because I don't know whether you know, but like Earl's Court is where all the Australians live while they're over here. And I'm going to go to a, a station that's in Earl's Court for a couple of days. Because like, the reverse must happen, mustn't it? <laughs> I mean, some fresh-faced Aussie's going to come in, he ain't going to know, is he? You know, eh, roll the durex! <laughs> Roll. <laughs> I'd love to see his Christmas presents, they must be amazing. They say the classic sim uh, symptom of growing old is when policemen start to look young <laughs> and pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, that's the great thing about the police, isn't it? I mean, they treat everyone as if they're the same age. Six. <laughs> <laughs> You've come out the boozer, don't you? You're zooming home. <laughs> from the coming <laughs> off. <laughs> Suddenly you see him in your rear view mirror. <laughs> tootle, 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 tootle. <laughs> 29 mile an hour, tootle, tootle, tootle. And they pull up by the side, don't they? Um, Start shoving the tree ball mints down. <laughs> yeah, and pleg <laughs> And deep breathing. <gasps> Why do you always deep breathe when we stop by the police? <gasps> <gasps> so I pulled up. They pulled up in front of me. He got out, put his hat on, came up to the car. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Who's been a naughty boy? <laughs> <laughs> Me, officer. <laughs> How naughty have you been? <laughs> Ever so naughty. <laughs> Drinky winkies. <laughs> what in his red barrel? <laughs> what in his red barrel? Oh, bloody hell. Oh, don't bother to get the bag out, Brian. <laughs> I have finally come up with the one minority group you cannot possibly offend. Dead people got <laughs> Dead people got No reason Dead people got No reason To live 
know is a strange people. Instead of kissing passionately, <laughs> you've been, haven't you? <laughs> Instead of kissing passionately, they, they rub noses together. <laughs> eh? It's all right. It's a bit messy if one of them's got a cold. <laughs> I wonder if they've got an equivalent of a French kiss. <laughs> <laughs> be a bit painful trying to jam your router up someone. <laughs> I suffer from insomnia. Um, I am an insomniac, and Lord only knows what causes it. I, I lie awake for hours wondering about that. <laughs> insomnia. Insomnia is a solo affliction. Insomnia only ever affects one person at the one time. Insomnia never affects two people in the same bed at the same time. <laughs> or three people, it depends on your life. <laughs> the decision every insomnia has to make every night is whether to give in and go downstairs and watch Bilko on the video, <laughs> or stay in bed and try and conquer the wretched curse. Now the thing is, I mean, you know, you're just lying there and then you then have a problem of what to do with your hands. <laughs> they're such awkward things in bed, aren't they? And they're so active in the day, it's almost impossible to try and keep them still at night. <laughs> anyway, to save my eyesight... <laughs> What I've done is like I've had two moles. <laughs> two holes made in the mattress. We all make mistakes. The Dalek said, climbing off the dustbin. <laughs> two holes. I'm going home now. <laughs> Two holes made in the mattress so I can stick my arms through. <laughs> it works, actually. It works. And the only trouble is, like, if you turn over suddenly in the night, you know, <laughs> you're on the floor and the bloody bed's on you. <laughs> and your mum comes in in the morning going, what the hell are you doing with that bed? <laughs> There's a Christmas Day ritual that I and a few of my friends indulge in at the local boozer. We all turn up for the lunchtime session wearing all the outlandish clothes we've been given by fruitcake aunts and, <laughs> and grannies who think you're still only 11 years old. <laughs> and you, get, you see blokes wearing shirts with steam trains all over. <laughs> a six foot stick, 18 stone geezer wearing noddy slippers and a Zorro cane. <laughs> sets you up to face the ordeal of Christmas lunch, doesn't it? Like that mountain of food you have to consume with a big, ridiculous purple paper app on you. It's just like a contraceptive, isn't it? You know it helps to make the occasion, but you feel such a fool putting it on. You can always spot pseudo-intellectuals. They wear corduroy suits and check shirts that are so garish even Canadians wouldn't wear them. <laughs> That's one of the joys of being a pseudo-intellectual. Life's one great fancy dress party. They, they wear baggy corduroy trousers. I mean, they're not supposed to be baggy. They just, they just become that way five minutes after they buy them. And when, and when you go to their house, all the furniture is covered in corduroy. There's always that brown sludge coloured corduroy. The sort that's impossible to stain no matter how gross your behaviour. You can throw coffee at it and tea and bovril and you just improve the colour. You can wipe your bum on it. The way corduroy smells, you get away with it too. And then thank God it's 12 o'clock. An old lang syne, and then that kissing starts. Yeah! <laughs> At least it stops your yawning, doesn't it? <laughs> Although when you're kissing people and you yawn, some of them think you've got a great technique. <laughs> New Year's Eve, you kiss anything that moves, don't you? <laughs> Where's the Labrador? <laughs> Happy New Year, goldfish! <laughs> you know, in this country, you have erasers. You know, erasers. 
<laughs> You're way ahead, aren't you? You're way ahead. In England, in England, we call erasers rubbers. I, now, I was unaware of the euphemism of what rubbers are here, you see. So, I mean, I didn't know, did I? So, I walked into an office supply shop. I didn't know. I walked, I went, uh, good morning. Uh, could I have a rubber, please? Are you one of those dickheads? I just want to rub it. Try the drugstore. So I trolled on down to the drugstore and I walked in. There was a woman behind the counter, right? There's always a woman in these situations. I walked up and said, uh, Good morning. Could I have a rubber, please? You just want one? I said, Yeah, I don't make that many mistakes. I said, have you got one with a Mickey Mouse on the tip so I can... <laughs> I worked at uh, Caesars in Lake Tahoe. Which, uh, are, you, are you familiar with that? Would you... Yeah, yeah, all that, that, yeah that gambling place. Wow, I mean, wow. We have an, an expression in England, gobsmacking. We, I, I couldn't believe all that gambling. I mean, we've got nothing like that in England. I mean, well, you can gamble in England. It's called eating in restaurants. <laughs> oh, you've been. <laughs> you order a rare steak and it comes out like a charcoal briquette. You know? The hotel I'm staying at, you can't get used to me sending the steak back because there's some flavour left in it. You know? But that Caesars was something else. I mean, those, it's like, it's decadent, isn't it? I think it's like, you can't resist those machines. You've got to put money in, haven't you? Like, I've got to put money in, I've got to go. Like, you could be a Mormon, right? But I mean, after two days, you'd be sticking money in, wouldn't you? Like, and it's, uh, it's, it's fascinating to watch people there, but particularly the English, because like, I mean, you know, the upper class go there. Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> You can always tell the husbands because they're trying to grow a chin. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> the demuring is like, oh no, I'm not going to gamble. Oh no, not me. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> well, maybe I'll just try a little quarter. <laughs> That's the trouble. Once you start, you're hooked, aren't you? I mean, like, you just become like everybody else. And there was this one English woman, she went, Oh, no, well, well, just one. <laughs> I went back three hours later, and she got four cigarettes on the go, going, Does this shit machine ever pay out? I tried to buy a Walkman once. I went to one of those shops, you know, there's a chain of them. I can't mention the name, but you know, you know, you know them. It's where they have those cretinous shop assistants with a combined IQ of four. <laughs> you know, um, does this Walkman record as well as play? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it records and plays and, you know, it's, it's a Walkman. <laughs> it does, but um, has it got a radio? Well, yeah, it's got a radio, you know, it's a Walkman, it's a radio and... <laughs> You know, it's got everything, you know. Oh, really? What a well, world. Has it got FM and long wave and stereo? Yeah, it's got FM and long wave and stereo. It's a Walkman, it's got everything. <laughs> can you microwave pigeons in this? <laughs> oh, yeah, you can microwave pigeons. <laughs> now, I find it a, a constant source of amusement that, as adults, we do exactly the same things to our kids that our mum and dads did to us. I mean, I found myself, last week, going to my kid, How many times have I told you not to point? <laughs> and I thought, I went through all this years ago, you know, now my kid's got to go through it. See, parents spend hours teaching you to walk and talk, and when you can, they tell you to sit down and shut up. <laughs> Condom's going to be the word of 1987, isn't it? I mean, I could, well, I mean, a couple of years ago, you brought up condoms at the dinner table, you'd be a social outcast. 
Well, if you brought up condoms at the dinner table. <laughs> 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 What did they serve you for dinner? <laughs> this sausage is a bit tough, isn't it? It used to be that teenagers had all the cash. Now the advertising agencies are changing their emphasis. There's money to be made out of the grey generation. It's called grey lib now. And you read with all these senior citizens go abroad for the winter. They go on these 80, 130 holidays. <laughs> Incontinental vacation. <laughs> <laughs> they have a whale of a time. Everything's laid on for them. At steridon parties. <laughs> musical commodes. <laughs> heavy wind carnage session. <laughs> Complan in a basket. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's too much trouble. Music to be lowered into the bath by. <laughs> There's LPs like change a colostomy bag a longer Mac. <laughs> Wouldn't it? We've all at some time or another eaten junk food. And manufacturers say the term junk food is meaningless. They prefer to call it convenience food. Quite right. As soon as you've eaten it, you want to get rid of it in the nearest convenience. <laughs> uh, you see, a couple of weeks ago, I attempted to cut a cat flap in the garage door. Now, I thought I'd put this in myself. See, it's not too difficult. All you have to do is cut a hole in the garage and fit the cat flap. I said to the missus, I'll do this. Oh. <laughs> and her face fell. Because uh, my attempts in the past have not been too successful. In our first house, I seriously tried to put the wallpaper up with polyfiller. <laughs> polyfiller, polycell, what's the bloody difference? Right? <laughs> so, I started to fit the cat flap on the garage door. Now, I don't know what I, would, I did wrong, and uh, we haven't got all night. But suffice to say, I had to call a carpenter in to put it right. I've overdone it a bit, and let's just say we can almost get the car in the garage without opening the door. <laughs> the carpenter came round, and he was one of those, you know, typical tradesmen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You can't do that then, huh? <laughs> um, it was a friend. <laughs> it often puzzles me that human beings are scared of insects that are like one millionth the size of them. Do you ever worry about that? I mean, I mean, it's one very special woman that isn't scared of a spider. You see, the women in the audience go, <laughs> What an irrational fear. A poor little spider wouldn't harm a fly. <laughs> I mean, women say when they go, it's in the bath, it's in the bath, and they're like a big quivering blob of plastic. Wah! Kill it, kill it, stop it, rip it apart, destroy it, kill it, kill it, kill it. <laughs> so you do that, you send it to its maker, about a, you know, like a Doc Martin size 10, and what do they say? <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> they didn't have to kill it! <laughs> but you told me to, well, you could have stunned it! <laughs> You can't argue with irrationality like that, can you? And, and there are plenty of irrational people about, particularly when they get turned on by, by fanatical things like religion. Oh, oh blimey, then, then they start wanting to kill someone they, they don't know or they've never seen or met because he wrote something they've never even read. You know, those people. <laughs> then there are those irrational people who idolise famous dead singers, mainly because they refuse to believe that they are dead. <laughs> Buddy Holly, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Elvis. Here's a case, Elvis. Elvis is, when told of Elvis's death, a Hollywood agent actually said, what a great career move. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't deny that Elvis records get played more now than when he was alive. Thank grief, Roger Whittaker's still breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I flew out from East Midlands Airport. You ever, have you ever used East Midlands Airport? <laughs> Isn't it quaint? It's a nice diddy airport, isn't it? It's the only runway I've seen with a cattle grid. <laughs> They've got air traffic control. It's a bloke with a megaphone. Get out the bloody run! And I, I flew on this knackered airline. I can't tell you which one it is, obviously, but like, I walked across to get on the plane and the pilot was kicking the tyres. 
said, yeah, I should get us there. Hey, hey. <laughs> They're trying to jump lead it from a Vauxhall Viva, you know. <laughs> I got on the plane, they took the steps away and the plane fell over. <laughs> Air hostess with a sense of humour. It's unique, isn't it? I said, what time do we get in? She said, I don't know. We've never made it yet. <laughs> we started off down the runway. And... <laughs> I thought we're never going to bloody take off here. <laughs> I looked out the window. We're on the M1. <laughs> Stopped up at the services with a Vinto and a wagon wheel. You know? <laughs> Any sun readers in? <laughs> <laughs> it is a rag of a paper. Though. I mean, I can't believe people buy. I mean, you can't even use it for bog paper, can you? Well, you can't. You wipe more on than you take off. <laughs> I like your morals. Thank you. Why do sun readers have black willies? Because the print comes off on their hands. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Someone's nicked me harmonica. <laughs> what does a man know about childbirth? Nothing. But he's got to be there at the birth. He was there at the conception, he's got a fear. <laughs> and we know nothing about it. I mean, we fool everybody that we do, you know. I mean, uh, I, mean I, I went to one. I mean, I, you know, my wife, the first one, I went. I was useless. I mean, I just, I just fainted out. <laughs> I missed everything. I, I woke up just in time to see the afterbirth coming out. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought, what an ugly bastard. <laughs> All the people in the delivery room are going, he's just like his father. <laughs> and children are so much more aware of the environment these days. I mean, in supermarkets, they know everything that you should or shouldn't buy. What's that you're buying, Daddy? Um, a bog cleaner. Is it biodisposable? <laughs> no, it's toilet duck. <laughs> And choosing a holiday isn't easy. Oh, we're not going to the Mediterranean, are we, Daddy? Oh, it's full of faecal matter. <laughs> It'd be like swimming in a cesspit. <laughs> a cesspit. This, this from someone who just 18 months ago lived in the toilet bowl. <laughs> I'm stuck halfway up the u because Action Man had gone scuba diving. <laughs> Fame is, it's like a drug and once you've sniffed it, some people just keep coming back for more, you know? Take David Icke. <laughs> what a career he's had. Ex-goalkeeper, snooker commentator, Green Party spokesman, and now, son of God. <laughs> That's a modest little claim, that. <laughs> just one step away from the big one. His other, his other modest claim is he's come to save the world. <laughs> well, he saved bugger all when he played for Coventry City. <laughs> we used to have metal work at school. Metal work. Okay, I was four years in metal work. My God, did we build some weapons. <laughs> we had a scud 30 years before Iraq, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and the thing is, it does, it has changed now, but in those days, we never had protection, you never had goggles and helmets and visors and gloves. You were perfectly safe because you were wearing the school apron. <laughs> this would protect you from anything. 
Shrapnel, thermal lances. I worry about rhinoceroses. Rhinos worry me. Boy, do we give rhinos a hard time. I mean, they say that rhino horn is an aphrodisiac. If it is, why are they an endangered species? <laughs> Manufacturers aren't deaf. They must be, there must be now, a smelly for every part of your body. <laughs> well, almost every part, all right. <laughs> I'm waiting for peeny fresh to come out, then I've got the luck. <laughs> With a bit of luck, it'll be a roll on. <laughs> When you're old, when you're old, you can wear what the hell you like. <laughs> Tea cosies, <laughs> loft insulation, <laughs> zip-up tartan booty slippers. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> when you're old, you can hear what you want to hear. <laughs> you're round, Grandad. Thank you, I'll have a point. You've got your own shop, Littlewoods. <laughs> you don't have to queue anymore. You don't have to queue when you're old. You just bar straight to the front. You know, well, well. Hey, what are you doing? I'm old. <laughs> well, can't you queue? No, I might die. <laughs> Bungee jumping. What the hell is all that about? <laughs> I, I mean, that's, that's bobble at time, that, isn't it? <laughs> That's train spotters having an hour off, isn't it? <laughs> it's just a glorified way of getting your contact lenses out. Isn't it? <laughs> a bloke said to me, he said, hey, 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 Jasper, hey, don't knock it until you've tried it. And it was in Bristol, they took me up to sus the suspension bridge, Clifton Suspension Bridge. Oh, blah, they're throwing themselves off. They're so enthusiastic. Oh, hello, yes. <laughs> it's a very exact science, Jasper. <laughs> oh, we get it down to the last millimetre, you know. <laughs> would, would you like your head to go into the water? <laughs> <laughs> Not unless I'm kneeling on the bloody bank, pal. That's the only term it's gone, isn't it? <laughs> One of the bungee jumpers was blind. <laughs> Blind bungee jumper, you need a bit of bottle for that. Didn't you? It was amazing listening to a Labrador scream at 300 feet. <laughs> <laughs> at least the bloke knew when he was getting near the water, because the lead went slack. <laughs> So funny people, aren't they? <laughs> Another irritating thing, those damn magic eye posters. You know, the ones where you're, you're supposed to see things beyond things. I, I haven't got a clue. I haven't managed one yet. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I'm staring here like... I'm, somebody bought me a book of them. It's like a book of wrapping paper. You know? The only success I've had is with the Sun newspaper. <laughs> if, I, if I hold it very close to my face and I pull it away very, very slowly, I can see this great big pile of shit. <laughs> Don't you know there's four million people who can't see it? Anybody buy lottery tickets? Yes. Yes. Any winners? Yes. That's the end of the loan then, obviously. <laughs> it's, a, it's a strange affair. There's a couple of anomalies. I mean, if you win this money, you know, whatever you win, these masses amounts of money, they're going to send round a counsellor <laughs> to tell you how to spend it and how to deal with your emotions. <laughs> <laughs> If I win 17.8 million pounds, I don't want a reject social worker coming round to my house. I want Cindy Crawford coming round to my house. I want my bank manager to come round and descale my u bend with his tongue. That's who I want round my house. Oh, 
I noticed there's a lot more women hecklers now. Um, you never used to get women hecklers. Well, except in bed. <laughs> get off! <laughs> you crap! <laughs> or it was, go down, do it all! Go down, do it all! You what? Go down to do it all, the ceiling needs painting! <laughs> And all those comedy groupies wanting to have hot monkey sex with you. <laughs> I know they're out there. <laughs> if I knew where they lived, I'd send them some tickets. I said. <laughs> and of course, loads of drugs on tour. <laughs> Vic Sinex. <laughs> Deep Heat. <you> know. <laughs> Snorting Complan. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> How can I tell you How much I'll miss you If you won't go away home where the buffalo roam and I'll show you a house full of cow shit <laughs> found the level have we <laughs> oh was it you that did the pushing put the stain upon the cushion <laughs> footsteps on the dashboard upside down or was it you, you sly woodpecker, got into my girl Rebecca? If it was, you'd better leave this town. <laughs> yes, was I that did the pushing, put the stain upon the cushion, footsteps on your dashboard upside down. But ever since I've had your daughter, I've had trouble passing water. <laughs> so I guess we're even all around. Have you ever been driving in your car and you've just done about 20 miles and you can't remember a damn thing? <laughs> you start thinking things like, shouldn't I be in the front? <laughs> this is not my car. <laughs> I tried that water skiing in Spain last year. What a waste of time that is, like a rich man's enema. <laughs> Ice cold water shooting up your bum, 45 mile an hour. Really. Here's 50 euros, take me round the bay again. I, I might be empty after that one, you know. And then I got worried because I read an article that there's a, a shortage of guide dogs for the blind. And I worried about it, and then suddenly I had the answer hey, guide cats. <laughs> all right, all right, not as good as a dog, but we'll get you through until you can get one. Can you imagine having a guide cat? You'd spend most of the day under the car, wouldn't you? <laughs> you have to go for walks on garden fences with the thing, you know. <laughs> You'd have to hide in the bush with it and wait for a car to come along and then dash across the road. <laughs> And you've got to come to terms with the sexual morals of the day. I mean, like, you know, in the 60s, we were, well, we were like nuns compared to them today. I mean, they're like gerbils. And, well, you just, you just keep being amazed. I found, I found some uh, love hearts. You know, do you know those sweets, love hearts? Yeah, if you don't, they're, they're flat sweets shaped like hearts. And there's little messages on that you give to your boyfriend and your girlfriend. I had them as a kid. I used to do it, you know. Like, I love you. <laughs> Be mine. <laughs> You're my dreamboat. <laughs> Have you bought some lately? I'm gagging for it. <laughs> Tongue my box. <laughs> Sorry, 
I'm a lesbian. <laughs> And we don't do humble. We are the old spots. Think you're tough enough, then we're ready to rumble. We are the old spots. Armed to the teeth with our steroid and dentures. Where does the fight start? Haven't got a clue, thanks to our dementias. <laughs> We're licensed to thrill We change with the times and we're all on the pill It's blue, it's diamond, it works like stink Slip it in the lager and they get a stiff drink We are the old spots Wearing super cool slippers with tart covered zips We are the old spots And Simon Cowell trousers with the waist above the armpits Tough as old boots and we don't do humble Where does the fight start? Think you're tough enough then we're ready to rumble We're at it four or five times a night The ladies moan all through it if you have to use the loo that much, get out of bed to do it! Make way for the old farts Shove your modern music, who the hell is Lady Gaga? we are the old farts Give us Tina Turner, better known as Lady Saga Make way for the old farts We'll be around forever, no chance of slowing up Braver than brave hearts. The first living generation never to grow up. 